I, I don't even know what to say, you guys. Uh, probably for one of the first times ever, I'm speechless. Uh, thank you all for helping me reach this goal of 5,000 subscribers. Um, you know, I've said at each goal, I had no assumptions that we'd I'd ever make it past like a thousand. Uh, so now to hit 5,000 and then, I mean, we're well past it now. I think we're 5,100 and something already. Um, I don't know. I, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, I know that the next video, which should be this video, that was going to be 110, was supposed to be episode 100, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I'm pushing it back again, but in for a good reason this time. Um, I mean, there have been good reasons in the past, but this is a positive one. Um, that episode will come. I'm going to guess around episode 125. Um, look forward to that. I think that you guys will really enjoy it. Um, but I wanted to do this video. Um, it's on Monday, so I want to do Motivation Monday as well. And I figured pushing this video, other video back, is not going to be that big of a deal. Um, in celebration of 5,000 subscribers, uh, it's going to be a video every day this week. So... You'll be seeing this with Motivation Monday. Um, we're going to do Tutorial Tuesday, which is just like every Tuesday from now on, I'm going to be doing how-tos. Um, I might do them outside of Tuesdays as well, but every Tuesday you guys will be getting a how-to video. Every Wednesday you'll be getting a Wheel Wednesday video. Um, I haven't come up with anything super creative yet for Thursdays, Fridays, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. Um, but I'm going to get into a groove now um, where we can do videos way more often. Um, things are... Big changes are happening here. Uh, my time is becoming a little more available thanks to some help at the shop, and that's gonna mean more videos for you guys. So look forward to those. Uh, enjoy Motivation Monday. This one's Joe Rogan. Um, once again, thank you all. I truly appreciate it. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, Ugh. of you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you, you, you set up a life that you didn't really want. You're, 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 you're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed and all that and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them oh my goodness then you're fully locked in you can't take any chances whatsoever and oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck and it is just a tactical mistake just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods your life is certainly some sort of a journey it's certainly some sort of a journey and we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys we're not going to always make the right steps and sometimes you have to back up and try again and if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again you've trapped yourself and the system will set out honey pots for people to get trapped in the system will set out the ideas of retirement the ideas of the golden years providing you benefits providing you a healthy work environment why well because they want people to work for them they don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape and those that's a pain in the ass so you gotta hire more people and train them and they want to set it up so that you stick around you stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world it's up to you to see that video game problem to see that issue as it comes up on the map and no no I think this is a right turn to see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them and then look at the people that are have kind of taken chances and navigated their way what do they do differently than you what 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 objectivity do they have that maybe you lack what insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know i don't don't i just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is gonna get the more rational results. I know that you're getting some comfort and satisfaction out of just laying around, doing nothing, eating, getting fat, but your life would feel better and richer 
if you had a goal, you chase that goal, you accomplish some things, and you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing. Maybe you're into drawing comic books, maybe yeah. you're into uh, making pottery or sculptures, or but find whatever the f that is and pursue that instead of doing nothing. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit, and then one day something goes wrong. And I mean, that's why s spoiled kids are so sad. Like a spoiled young boy is one of the saddest things ever. A young boy that becomes a man and can't take care of himself, and his dad has to keep on rescuing him. His dad has to keep on bailing him out of situations and giving him money. I've met guys like that, and that is a crippling affliction when they don't have the character themselves to be able to get by in life. They constantly need someone to help them and bail them out. Even as a grown man, I've met guys in their 40s that still need help from their parents. I'm like, what the f***, man? <sighs> You're never going to get it right because somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just got to get up and get sh done. There's sometimes where you have to f pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you want to stay in bed. And if you don't do that, and you just keep calling on your daddy, and your daddy keeps rescuing you, you never develop those tools. You never develop that ability to recognize what you're doing wrong with your life. Because you're, you're soft, you got a cushiony, you got a safety net, a safety net for your safety net. Through difficult tasks, you learn an incredible amount about yourself. And you, through, through the fire of competition, you get to understand, you get to understand motivation you get to understand the resistance that you have inside your mind to doing hard work mm. you get to understand the rewards of discipline like you don't truly appreciate relaxation unless you've worked hard mm. and that is the yin and the yang of life and i've said this to to the point of people getting sick of it but one of the worst decisions a man can make i can only speak for men obviously um is to be comfortable I don't think you should try to be comfortable. I think what you should try to do is try to earn comfort. Mm -hmm. And if you if you can get a day off where you, you, you've worked hard and you've, you've accomplished goals, that day off would be so sweet. It's the reinforcement of those goals, like understanding that the, you can achieve those goals. It's going to be difficult. You're going to push through the difficulty. And then you're going to understand what difficulty truly is and how much of it is just mental, how much of it is just in your mind, this adversity to to uh, difficult task or to struggle. You know, and a lot of people have that. They're scared. They're scared of, of complications. They're scared of, of failure. Failure is a big one that people are afraid of, but failure is one of the most important things you could ever have as far as like the motivation to do things differently. Mm. Be the hero in your own movie. Pretend that if mm. your life was a movie and your life started now, what would the hero do? What would the person that you respect do? What would the person that you admire, the person that inspires you, what would they do? Well, do that shit. And if you do that, you slowly build momentum. You like today I did what I wanted to do today I started a class in yoga I did this I did all these things that I was saying I wasn't gonna do and now I feel momentum and yeah. momentum is a very important point in people's lives that's why some folks don't like to take days off because they feel like they're losing momentum and they sort of have to restart the wheel up again after a vacation you don't have the time to do the thing that's gonna enhance your life mm -hmm. that's gonna benefit you it's gonna move forward your career your life your prospects your art whatever it is you're working on mm. You know, I think that it's it's hard for people because we operate on the momentum of the past. And a lot of times our past has been a just fucking just a graveyard, a, a, just a, a wreck of disasters, one after the other. And you look at that and you go, well, that's who I am. I'm a failure. I drink too much. I fall asleep at work. I do this. I do that. Everybody's got these stupid barriers they put in their own head. You got to resist those goddamn things because they don't do you any good. And they certainly define the potential for your future in a negative way. It's not self-serving and it's not even real. You know, you, 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 you put this artificial ceiling on the potential for what you're doing. If you hit a wall, Okay, that just means you need to regroup and rethink. It doesn't mean that wall's there, especially when it comes to something like social media or like a, a podcast, something where you're just, you're putting out a piece of art, you're putting out something that you've created. There's no wall as far as like how many people are gonna enjoy it or how far it's gonna go. It's just, it is what it is. And if people don't like it, make it better. If they like it less, fix that. F figure out a way to do it. You can do that. And this, this idea that there's no way to get past the starting block today is just ludicrous. It's crazy. And it's just this this poor thinking. And people that are trapped in bad situations 
One of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at, if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. And there's, there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think somehow or another through momentum and just through just things falling into place the way they are and people trying to fit their lives around the way these pieces have fallen into place there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and and almost painful yeah, to them yeah soul killing soul killing yeah. they're stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that they, they 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 relish the time to take a shit in the bathroom and look at their phone i mean they literally do that that's a, a highlight of someone's day they get in traffic on the way home they get home after that they're watching television and they're fucked they have Deep debt. This is not like there's this soul killing no. thing is not the, giving the, them any freedom. The I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self examination. It also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like shit, you screw something up. Like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you fucked up. Yeah, you what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. And there's a path, and you, we, we think of people like, you see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. You, you absolutely can be limited by your perceptions of someone's definitions of you, but you can break through that stuff. That is, that's what you break through with discipline. You, that's where you break through with hard work and concentration and focus. And that's why it's so important to have like either a discipline or an art or something that you're trying to create or something that you're really focusing on. Because if you don't have like a point of focus as a human, I think it's very hard to get through this life and have an appreciation for, for true struggle. Because our physical struggle with what our bodies are designed for, the caveman of 10,000 plus years ago, our bodies are still designed for that. That physical struggle doesn't really manifest itself when you're sitting in front of a cubicle, you know, in front of a computer in a cubicle uh, in this unnatural position all day. I think the whole, the whole situation is very confusing for the human body. And we don't get the tests that we need in order to have what you would call personal sovereignty. So you gotta impose those tests on yourself. There really is nothing perfect in human beings. There's always room for improvement. There's always a shorter path. There's always a quicker victory. There's always a, there's, there's, a, there's always new things to learn. And as soon as you start thinking that you've mastered something to the point of, of, of an end, like you've, you kind of missed out what it's all about in the first place. It's all about, you're constantly uncomfortable. You're supposed to be constantly uncomfortable. The point is that it's a, it's a long path, a long, arduous path. And I think anything that's worth doing is probably like that.